guard thee with thy tenderest care. In the trial, in the trial, I will make thy pathway clear. When last I above his glory, and down round thee all is right, pleasures like a river flowing, all things tending to delight, I'll be with thee, I'll be with thee, I will guide thy steps. Thank you so much for that. Um, happy Sabbath, everyone. Before we open the word, I ask uh, that we reverent and that we bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father, thank you so much again. I ask you, Lord, that you can remove all words that don't come from you, Lord, moving forward, or any thought that, Lord, may, that may interrupt us at this moment. I ask you that we can open our hearts to you and Lord, that the words that I'm about to speak, Lord, they can come from you and they can be tailored to each heart, Father. You know each need of our, of our families, you know each individual needs of every person here, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, that you can come in your presence in the name of Jesus, amen. It was very interesting that the sister talked about building. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about building as well, so I'm gonna ask you if you can go to your Bibles in Matthew 7. And Matthew 7 talks a little bit, well, it says a lot, but this is the conclusion of the Sermon of the Mount. And we can appreciate here what Jesus is saying. He's concluding because we see here in verse 24, it says, therefore. So he's concluding his sermon, but he's also telling, therefore, there is something else, right? So he talks about here, and then I'm pretty sure we read this many times, and there's also many stories for the children as to how to build a house, right? So, I can, I'll tell you my story. Building my house, we're opening up for the foundation, and I'm waiting for the gentleman, and I didn't realize here in the country everything moves very slow. <laughs> so, <laughs> I asked for the gentleman to come over, say, you know, start cutting the ground, you know, open up the foundation, and all of a sudden it starts raining in Tennessee. And Tennessee doesn't rain, right? When it rains, it pours. And it started raining and raining and raining, and all I kept concerning was the ditch is getting filled with water. And wow, well, I don't have a foundation anymore. And those who visited me can remember probably my foundation was gonna be this big, and ended up being this big. And it was a huge problem for me because I didn't know much about it. So I didn't know much about the, the terrain, the subsoil, you know, the soil. But this guy knew exactly what he was doing. He told me, don't worry about it. We'll make it wider and we'll make it deeper. So if that's the problem, if you're concerned about it, I said, that's fine. Yep, I'll go with it. So that's where this is taking me. We scratched. And he said, not until you hear that sound from my bucket hitting the bottom of the, of the ground and it starts scraping is when we hit what we want, something solid to build on. And I said, okay, that's fine, no problem. We'll do it like that. So I heard the first scratch, and I was like, okay, amazing. We're not going that deep. But we started hitting chert, and that's a, that's a good thing here in the south. And he told me, you're fine there. You don't worry about it now. Now we have to build up with concrete. 
Everything we dug, we have to put it in concrete, and we have to put a lot of rebar in it. So I said, that's fine. And I told my wife, I'm a little bit concerned because now the foundation is not necessarily the same size as we had it before. Let me throw a little bit more rebar in it. It wasn't a lot of money, but it made me feel good about it. And that was my foundation for my house. The foundation that we're going to be talking about today is who are we as Seventh-day Adventists? So I'm going to open it up to you guys, and I would like you guys to discuss and tell me what is a Seventh-day Adventist? I mean, we're all here. It is the Sabbath. So I'm going to start with that. What is a Seventh-day Adventist? And please pray for me as, you, as you're thinking of these things, so then the sermon can be well proportioned. So what is a Seventh-day Adventist? Hmm? <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> Go ahead, sister. People who are waiting for the second advent of Christ. Yes. Okay, that's one. Okay, sister? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Looking for Jesus' return and worshiping on the seventh day. Okay. Seventh day Adventist, right? We worship on the seventh day and we're waiting for second coming. Pretty short, sweet, right? But if someone was to ask you outside of our terms here, who are you? as a Seventh-day Adventist. What do you believe in as a Seventh-day Adventist? Follower of Jesus. Follower of Jesus, right? The Bible. The Bible, yes. The Bible. <coughs> yes. Let me tell you that there's 28 doctrines, right, that we believe in. 28 doctrines. And this year, I know church starts in June somewhere, right, when we change the terms of everything. Well, that's, that's kind of where I'm going with that. That's what I'm going to be talking about throughout the year, following year. For, from, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on with my family. I need them to know an answer when somebody asks them, who are you as a Seventh-day Adventist? What are your beliefs? Because the problem is that I'm looking at, and I won't focus on the problem, I'm going to focus on a solution. But I have to point out the problem first. When our kids leave the church, and when I saw my siblings, my, my siblings leaving the church, and after talking with them to prepare this sermon, all of these things start coming back. Why did they leave the church? Most of them could not tell me any of the reliefs. But they can tell me all the problems that the Seventh-day Adventist church has. But they, they don't know or they don't have a clue what our beliefs are. So that's what I was mentioning, that foundation. When we look at here, Matthew, it tells me a story, right? And it tells me a story of two different types of building. One was built on the what? The on the sand. Okay, you're focusing on the problem. So let's focus on the solution. One was built on the what? The on the rock, yes. One was built on the rock. Who is the rock? Christ. Christ. Christ is the rock. And so as we open up through that, we'll see that the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventists are divided in six different sections. And one of them, and I like, really, really like the first one. Where do we base our doctrines from? The Bible. The, Bible, the Word. That's the first one. And when you focus on that, and you start asking the Lord for wisdom, we go to the Bible first. And through reading LNG Boy's writing, I learned that comparing verse with verse is what actually opens up to our thinking, and the Lord can actually inspire for us to continue searching for more. Amen. But I also noticed something else. When I was reading on regards to this, I noticed that when the Lord spoke, He spoke with authority. And that is found on the last verse of this uh, chapter. And it says that He spoke with authority. Not like the rest of referring to the scribes. So when I speak in my house, I need to speak with authority. When I talk to my children, I have to speak with authority. But if I don't know, or if I don't have that base, how can I speak with my child? And explain to him what is asked of them. Because remember, Daniel, what did he do? He proposed in his heart. Actually, let's look it up. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel. 
Daniel 1.8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. So, how would da Daniel define defile? What does it mean if no one teaches him that? I mean, he's, he's a young adult here, by the way. Where did he get this from? Foundation. From that foundation, from the mother. Mm -hmm. and by the way, I'm not only going to speak with the mother, I'm going to speak about the father too, because we have a huge role in our homes. That foundation was key for him not to defile himself with the meat. And meat can be food. It can be referred as food. So, a simple thing, right? Now we're thinking about food. What has this got to do with any foundation? He proposed not to be defiled, not to defile himself. When we read the, the story, we're going back to Matthew 7, we're going to see that there's two types of men. One that found it upon the rock, and the other one on the sand. We climbed, uh, let me see if I can remember correctly. Let me look at my notes. I always forget places, by the way. But in the Anna Dunes, we climbed those. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if anybody's been there. It's approximately 108 or 110, I could be wrong, something like that, feet above the lake. But when you're climbing this thing, it's completely upright like this. So you take one step and two back. One step and two back. So you kind of have to crawl a little bit sometimes, and sometimes you have to push yourself and continue to walk when you can, and continue to crawl until you make it all the way to the top. When you're building, they say in Florida specifically, that when you build on sand, it's one of the most stable and, and um, materials that can be very predictable. But the Bible here is telling me something else, and it's giving me an example, and I actually appreciated that walk because every time I took two steps back, it kind of reminded me of this. Where am I putting my foot on? You know, where, where am I setting myself with my family? And I noticed something, and I remember my kids actually trying to do the same thing that I was doing. And as we're climbing this thing, they're, they're complaining, hey, Dad, this is painful in my back of my foot. Can we take our shoes off? Sure, take your shoes off. Let's try to make it easier. So we took our shoes off, and we still couldn't find any footing. <laughs> but we made it to the top. And even when you're on the top, on the top of the sand, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be stable. Right. Dooms move, by the way. Within a year, that doom will, will never be the same. Do you see where I'm going with this? Who is the rock? Jesus Christ. Christ never moves. Amen. His word never moves. It never changes. It's always there for us. Amen. But for us to have that foundation, we also need to talk about this foundation with them. And one of the things that I found amazing is that when, when we read in Ephesians 6, 6, 4, it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up, build them, foundation, in the nature, the character, and ab ab uh, admonition of the, of the master. The nature of God, his character. So who am I as a Seventh-day Adventist? And what am I doing to promote these things in my house? Because it's easier said than done. And as your children get older, and I'm having that experience, and I'm talking from experience in that sense, I'm finding out that it doesn't get easier. Because there's new challenges. And their character is almost there to the point where you can't say, hey, listen, I'm sorry I failed back then, but you have to say it. And so how do we build it? Through communication, conflict resolution, forgiveness, humility, self-denial, trust, and this is the base, love. If we don't have Christ's love, we can never build our children to where they need to be. We can never put this foundation at Seventh-day Adventists and tell them, hey, God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit. So when somebody else comes to them and tells them, who is the Holy Spirit? They'll know. They'll have an answer. But if we don't implement all these things in our family, there's very little that we're going to put in their minds. Communication is key. 
And I learned it this past week. My children have changed completely. And I'm trying to catch up. But I'm learning, okay, key, communication. I need to communicate. But communicating is also listening. And conflict resolution. Where is the conflict? Is it in me? Is it in my son? Or is it in both? What did I do to cause the conflict? What did I forget to give my children to let them know who they are? To let them know who they represent? So the base for us is we need to understand who we are first as a Seventh-day Adventist. So when the conflicts come, they'll have an answer for that. So we don't have to be afraid if my child is not within my reach, they'll still have an answer. The proper answer. And that's the scary part because we pray so much for my children when they were going away. Are they going to represent our home? Are they not? It's a test of faith, both for parent and, and student in that sense. Because they're also learning. They continue to learn. And by the way, every experience that they bring home, now we have to discern each one of those two. But do I have the base? Do I have a beliefs? And what are my beliefs as a Seventh-day Adventist? By the way, when we do it with humility, and in our back of our mind we have that we have to have forgiveness towards them as well for making the wrong mistake, but for doing the mistakes that they're doing, and correct them with love, but we have to have that self-denial as well. We have to put that trust back in their hands, that they're gonna make the right decision at one point. And when we put that trust back in their hands, we have to do it with love. And the reason why I was talking about a little bit, do um, you remember what, what verse that, that, that I picked for the reading, special reading? Second Kings 23, 25. And like unto him, there were no king before him that turned to the Lord. And my version says Yahweh, it's the old version. With all his heart, he, they turned to the Lord. He turned to the Lord, this king. What was the difference in him? Do you know how old he was when he started reigning? Do you know who I'm referring to? Josiah's laughing. <laughs> I'm referring about King Josiah. How old was he? Eight years old. If you read two to three, maybe, successions of kings, you'll read that also the mother is also mentioned in there. And, the, and his mother's name was, and his mother's name was, and his mother's name was. And we get to him as well, and it says in verse 2, I'm sorry, and it says in verse 1 actually, and his mother's name was Jediah. Jedediah, I think it's, it's pronounced correctly. Why is this so important? That it's mentioned throughout the, 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 the previous kings also, because they were corrupt. They have no love for God. Now this eight-year-old comes up, and the first thing that he starts doing is rebuilding. Rebuilding. What was there to rebuild? Characters. The, the characters, the temple. Yeah. The temple represents our character as well, by the way. And we need to rebuild that. As parents, we need to rebuild our character. We need to rebuild the foundation of our church at home. And we have these fundamental beliefs that we need to rebuild at home. 28 of them, not missing one. Those are fundamental beliefs that we have as Seventh-day Adventists. That foundation needs to be laid again. Just like I had to clean out all that trench, we have to dig in there, and it's not easy, by the way, and it stinks sometimes. Because water, what happens when water we get stagnant? It doesn't smell well. And that's what happened. It's not a pleasant job, but we have to do it. But we have to do it with love, with forgiveness. By the time this king became 18, they found something special in the temple, the Word of God. Ten years have passed since he became king. He embraced that Word. He tore his, his robe. He tore his clothes. 
And the Lord saw that from him. Now, do I need to tear up my, my jacket, my clothes? What, is that, what does that mean? My heart needs to be changed. This man was not only rebuilding a city, building the temple, but he, was, he wanted to rebuild the whole system that the Lord had provided for them. A system of worship, a system of education, true education, which is considering the character of God, and that's who we need to reflect. Amen. It needs to be rebuilt from scratch, from the bottom, from the foundation. Because otherwise we're foolish, and that's what it says. It says if we plant our foot on sand, we are foolish. Because the winds came in and blew everything out, right? The rain came in. Who are the rain? Think about it. Don't, don't think of it as a thing. Think of it as who. Who is the rain? Politically, right? In our foundations, now, now we have to reconsider. How do we treat this person that thinks differently of me? Do I need to be politically right or I need to be right in the word? Because our homes are getting attacked each day and by the hour, by the way. And if we don't open up our eyes, we're going to think, oh no, everything is fine because they don't expose these things to us. But they're thinking them. So we need to open up our hearts and our minds to deal with these things. It's easy to educate someone with a phone. Here, look, leave me alone. Take the phone. It's easy to guide them. Hey, here, read this book. This book is really good for you, by the way. It's going to solve whatever issue you're going through. But that's not the point. We need to read it with them. That's not the point. We need to guide them. And, and this was a huge slap in the face for me, reading this. Because as I see my kids growing, I see also the changes that I saw in myself when I was that age. And there is danger in that. Because if I'm not reflected the character of God now and they can't see that in me, they're not going to reflect the character of God when they're away from me. They're not going to know their beliefs as Seventh-day Adventists. When someone comes to you, tells you who the Holy Spirit is, and you question it, now you start putting things, thoughts in your mind? Or Christ's divinity? Or the Word? You start questioning the Word, which is one of our fundamentals. Or our marriage? Yes. Or what our marriage should look like? Do you see where I'm going with this? Put in that base. We need to strengthen our foundation. The Lord blessed this king while he was preparing a better people. And by the way, what I really appreciate as well is that he knew something bad was going to happen to his people. But he wanted to prepare them for that. And Daniel is the result of that. You can see it clearly that this king is trying to do the right thing. So. I'm going to paraphrase what I had on the computer because I know the time is ticking. But through the writings that I read here, it tells me that the priest of the household is who? The father. And everything gets drawn to him. And that's what the wonderful writer of LNG White says. But he needs to get up in the morning and open up the worship and close with worship. And at the same time, he needs to ask for forgiveness for his sins and the sins of his family. Remember Job? Did I say it right? Yes. Yes. Isn't that what he did for his kids? Yes, sir. That's what we have to do each day. That's what we have to do each day. We have to get up early in the morning. Whether we like it or not, we have to do our devotional. Because the key to all of this is communication, right? That's what I said in the beginning. Communication. But not only with our children, not only with our wives, but with the Lord. Amen. And if I don't go to the Lord in communication and ask Him and beg Him for His mercy, first of all, to forgive my sins and to understand what His will is for my family, I'm not creating that foundation that I need. I need to have a footing before I can pull my kid up. If I don't have that, then I'm just pulling two steps back every single time I take a step forward. 
speaking with a child that has the mentality of an adult is a conflict of itself. Because they can outsmart you easier now. They have the intelligence because it's right there in his fingertips. And it may not be the one you want, but that's the one they're getting. So you need to have a footing to, to answer the questions that you don't want to answer as a parent. The conflict begins at home, let me tell you. Not at church. When it makes it to church, it's because it already happened and erupted at home. So by the time it gets here, and you say, well, this, this church is not the right one for me, and you're walking away. No, 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 no. Walk back to your home and start there. And it's difficult, let me tell you, it's not easy. Dealing with teenagers is not the easiest thing, and I thought it was going to be easy when I was growing up. <laughs> the conflict in their minds, the great controversy in their minds, it's a life. And you need to wake up and open up your eyes. We need to wake up. I need to wake up. My wife needs to wake up, and if I'm not the one leading my home, who is? Because I am called to be a priest at home. But the best judges are sitting right in front of me. When the word was read to this, to this king, he did the right thing. He gathered everyone, all the prophets, all the important people, and he took them up there and he read the word back to them. Why was that so important to them? Because he needed to lay a foundation for them because he knew what was coming to them. And it's sad because the prophetess explained to him that he was going to, what was waiting for them was not easy. They were going to be overtaken. And the taxation process that they went through, I wouldn't like to go through. You know, Ellen G. White, when she writes in Ministry of Healing, says that our body will be taxed. And immediately that thought came to my mind. You know what taxation is? We all have to give it back, whether we like it or not. But would you like your homes to be taxed? Daniel proposed in his heart. Daniel proposed in his heart. And that's what we have to pray. Allow my children to propose in their heart, not to defile you, Lord, not to defile themselves, Amen. not to defile their home. In short, I'll read this verse. Because the heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before God. When thou hearest, I will speak against this place and against its inhabitants. Therefore, they should become a desolation and a curse. And he continues saying, because he tore his clothes apart, and the, soul, the, the Lord saw mercy on him. But what was coming to his people was not going to be easy. I don't know what's coming to my children. But if I don't put that footing under their, 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 their minds, and let them know what the Lord wants out of them, and let them know what the Lord is, should be doing for them, if they abide by his law, then I need to open up my heart as well. Amen. And I need to tear up my clothes. And I need to ask for forgiveness. It's hard to go back to your child and say, I'm sorry. I messed up. This is where you need to believe on. Amen. Sorry for not teaching you that before. Forgiveness begins healing. Amen. Conflict resolution begins at home, not at church. Humility begins at home, not at church. Amen. What we see here is a byproduct of our homes. Self-denial begins at home. 
And that trust that we're going to impart into our children begins also at home. Because I can't tell my kid here, please don't run. Please don't slam the door. Shut off the water. There's a bill coming. Shut off the lights. Don't go hide in that room. That doesn't begin here. It begins at home. So my trust needs to be given fully to my children, but I also need their trust back. And I also need to trust that what I'm doing for them and putting the right footing under their feet is going to be the right step forward after we reconciliate ourselves. Amen. Everything begins with communication and it should end with love. How can I reflect Christ's love in my heart, in my home, if I don't spend time with him? How can I reconciliate the, the, the problems at home, all the conflicts? How can I find solution to that if I don't spend the time with the Lord? In the morning and in the evening, Sister White says, asking for forgiveness of their sins. So with that in mind, I'll close, and I would like to leave that thought in your mind as well. May the Lord bless you. I ask you guys continue to pray for my home. I'll be praying for everyone's home. And let's think about this. The point driven today, communication, conflict resolution, forgiveness, humility, self-denial, trust, and love. Remember that. Let's bow our heads to pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for speaking to us this morning. Allow us, Father, to continue to work on our characters each day, Lord. Whatever is put in front of us, allow us to deal with it with character of Christ. Allow us to mend any broken bones, Lord, in our hearts. Turn them into hearts of flesh, hearts that would listen to you, Lord. Revive our bones, Father. I ask you that you put your Holy Spirit in every single home here represented. Father, please come back soon because we need that, Father. We need that so bad, Father. Protect our children wherever they are, and please keep them safe. And as we pray for them, Lord, if we do interceding prayer for them, I ask you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit can also dwell in their hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. 669.